I would want to state that we are not an IGR um, generating um, ministry. We're mostly welfare, which like you very well know, is one of the core mandates of any government to its people. Any government that fails to provide social welfare for its people has failed in its obligation of governance to its people. I would want to state very um, clearly that our promise from our side as a team is that we'll improve on everything we've met. The renewed hope agenda of President Bola Ahmed Tinibu is to ensure that the grassroots truly, truly, in all honesty, receive what is due them. And he can say this number of persons are those who we have pulled out of poverty. And in all honesty, for me as better, as a person, I am 100% determined to meet that mandate given to me by President Bola Ahmed Tinibu, working with my team. I truly want poor people to, to really receive that relief that they need in this country. We have lots of poor persons, over 133 million persons are living below poverty line. And this is an emergency, and that's why we are not resting any single day since I started. I'd want to um, also state clearly that the Senate and the House of Reps can hold us accountable for what is done and what is not done. I want you to repeat this again, please. The Senate and the House of Representatives can hold us accountable for what is done as it concerns the renewed hope agenda mandate of President Bola Ahmed Tinibu. Thank you very much. We will ensure we get to the grassroots and we will go there with you. We will go there with you to implement. At least when you are on the field with us implementing and you see what is going on and you are sure that your people have benefited from it, then you can be the ones to preach our own um, gospel when we come for the next budget um, uh, session. I would want to address some of the issues raised really very quickly. First, um, he mentioned the capital budget, which of course is not reflected in 2024. Um, we want to plead. It's one of the things which I said there was an omission because it's supposed to be a counterpart between us as government the private sector, the development partners, and others. That was omitted. We want to plead that that be returned back to the budget. Like you said, there are many programs to be done. Where would these programs be done from? We must actually be sincere. If we are actually delivering the renewed hope mandate of President Bola Ahmed Tinibu, and we are actually going to meet the expectations of Nigerians, then we must allocate more to what would directly affect Nigerians. And we will walk through you to get to the grassroots. You are right by their door, and we need you all the way. I would also um, refer to our brother. I, I feel really very touched. I, I must really commend the way you said it with ease because I'm, I, I feel so broken. And if you would ask me, I may not want to say so much on it. But I want to assure you that for your sake, I'll be in Casina. And the entire team will be in Casina. And we will put pressure until we get the right things done for your people. We would also work with the security agencies to see that more is done for them. At least that will be the only way to heal your wounds. And may God rest the soul of your brother. <laughs> for the response time, for the response time from the various agencies, a lot of coordination needs to be done, especially as it concerns humanitarian response in the country. Presently, there's a lot of, um, I would say, uncoordinated operations that has led to delay in response and it's completely wrong, absolutely wrong. 
when there is a humanitarian situation, there are different stages of response. There's an immediate response that should happen within six hours of the occurrence of that humanitarian issue. There's a response that should be for 24 hours. There is a response for the next seven days. There's a response for the next one month. There's a response for six months. And then there's a sustainability plan from one year to seven years until you're able to pull those people from the humanitarian response bucket out to the normal system where they can continue with their normal lives. Now, the unfortunate part is that Nigeria usually treats humanitarian response like it's a one-off action. So if it happens today, we come today, we share rice and we move. It's the departure that we are bringing. By the grace of Almighty God, within this next one year, by the time we come back to this house, we should be able to have shown a humanitarian hope for Nigeria where we have detailed monitoring of response part time. It's like a war room where you're looking at what has happened, what has not happened, what's the next step. We don't have it as a country and we must, we must have it. And that's where the special intervention comes in. That's why we're requesting for the Humanitarian and Poverty Alleviation Trust Fund. What that trust fund, which has been approved by the Federal Executive Council does, is that it gives you the flexibility to be able to reduce response time and attend to any humanitarian crisis that arises within a twinkle of an eye, with a snap. Because it doesn't go through all the rigors that you go through to respond. For instance, you write to the ministry, you write to agencies to say, like NEMA, to say, oh, we have this situation in, I'll give an example, Bronu State. It happened yesterday night, or it happened six hours ago. First, they have to go through the process of writing, applying, going through the procurement process. Going through, So by the time you go through all of that, you have lost response time. And you might even get there when the situation has already either gone worse or become better by just natural interventions and adaptability of the people who are affected by it. We need to change. That's not the way to respond to humanitarian crisis in a country. And that President Bola Ahmed Tidibu is committed to doing. We are sure all the members of this house that going forward, response time will change. We are setting up a situation room already and we are creating a humanitarian hub where these operations will take place from. We are working with the Red Crescent in UAE, Dubai. They are also ready to support us. And that's why I said government should put this portion so that they see that government is committed and it's easy for them to commit. To the point of the medicine which you mentioned, yes, indeed, medications for refugees. Um, it's what that medication line was written for. But like you said, a lot needs to be done. Part of the poverty, when you say 133 million Nigerians are affected by multidimensional poverty, part of it is that they don't have the ability to pay for drugs and access health care. And that's why we need to strengthen that mandatory implementation of the National Health Insurance Act. Beyond this, as a ministry and the agencies under it, we need to intervene in terms of providing this free medication as well as free medical interventions for poor, the very poor in society, refugees, and internally displaced persons, as well as persons living with disability. Going forward, we believe that with this budget cycle, we'll would be able to implement um, some of that. Finally, um, like you said, we, have, we must have a national spread to our programs. You are indeed very correct. If you say emergency, or sorry, humanitarian crisis, the first thing that comes to mind is usually the Northeast, because the Northeast has been affected for a very long time. They've gone under a protracted humanitarian crisis. That's awesome and correct and interventions will continue until they are pulled out of it. 
However, like I tried to bring to the front burner since I came on board, is the fact that beyond the northeast, we have issues in the northwest, we have issues in the southeast, we have issues in the north central, as well as other regions of Nigeria, and we must be able to, as a country, adequately respond to this. In our new arrangement, we will have a total national outlook. I have spoken and held meetings with all the UN agencies. I have equally held meetings with all the development partners and the embassies. We will have a total national outlook. Look at the flashpoints that require immediate response and those that require durable solution as a result of protracted crisis and see how best we can address them. Finally, the list of the programs which we have written out here is not just because we want a budgetary allocation, but it's because we want you to be part of the implementation and to work with us on it. We believe that if we get that budget line for the Humanitarian and Poverty Alleviation Trust Fund, we can be able to get funding from there to address all of those programs. We are also requesting that in terms of implementation in your various um, constituencies, that you have a liaison officer that liaises between yourself and the ministry and program managers and operators. That way, they are following up they are able to get inputs from you and they are able to join you or, or ensure that you're with us when we're implementing and you're monitoring the implementation from your constituency using your constituents. So if you receive, you say you've received. That way we know that truly it's getting to the poorest of the poor. I have no other mission. I have no other mission than to see that we elevate people out of poverty and promptly address issues of humanitarian crisis in Nigeria. And posterity will judge me and members of our team if we do not keep to this. I thank you for listening. Thank you very much for the eloquent responses that uh, you gave to the various questions. Now, I want to remind you of one thing. When you took over the mantle of leadership in the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, you made mention that you are going to create 774 humanitarian hubs yes. in the 774 local government areas. Yes. How far have you gone? So we have started with the national hub, which is the first point that every other hub will feed into, and that is what we are working with the Red Crescent of Dubai, and we hope that it will be completed within the next three months. After that, we will now have the regional hubs, which will feed into the national, and then we have the state hubs, and then the local um, government hubs. If we do not have the national, there will be no point for this to feed in. But we believe that before we come for the next budget cycle, both the national, the regional, and some states should have been completed. Are you, uh, is your budget sufficient enough for you to do this work that you mentioned? Our budget is far from reality. Very far from reality. Yes, of course, I'm not just sitting down and expecting that the Nigerian government admits limited resources and several other competing interests will provide all of the funds that we need. And that's why we created the Humanitarian and Poverty Alleviation Trust Fund. We've been out to New York, we've been to Saudi Arabia, we've been to um, Dubai for COP and several other engagements. And we have people, individuals, private sector um, uh, leaders, as well as the development partners that are ready to key into this fund. But of course, they will key into the fund when they see commitment from us as a nation. And that's why, again, we are appealing to this very exalted committee who is in charge of a critical aspect of government, if not the most critical aspect of government, to provide welfare for its citizens. So please look into our budget envelope and see how you can help us include just the budget line 
and then put in required funds that can help us address this. Two very important things. The first one is that the Federal Executive Council has recently approved the creation of the Humanitarian and Poverty Alleviation Trust Fund, which was sent in as part of the um, budget appropriation for 2024. Unfortunately, um, that was omitted, uh, which the Minister for um, Budget um, expressly apologized for that omission for humanitarian interventions across the country, which already had given a clear picture of what the humanitarian issues across the country right now looks like. I'm very happy that you are representing the good people of Bronu State and you know the present situation on ground in Bronu. Of course, beyond Bronu, we. That is not a black veil. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> it's, it's the not reality, Your Excellency. No, it's just by the way. Yes. And we have similar situations, very bad situations in Benue State, where we have millions of persons who are living just in the open space, requiring humanitarian response in Benue and several other flashpoints across Nigeria. The Humanitarian and Poverty Alleviation Trust Fund, which would be having contributions from our development partners, private sector, philanthropic individuals, and several others, is an opportunity for us as government to put our funds where our mouth is and ensure that these persons who are undergoing these very horrible situations receive help because they deserve to have it as Nigerians. The second point which I would also want to um, raise using this opportunity is the fact that we would um, like or seek the support of the National Assembly to see that the various um, commissions, agencies, and parastatals under the ministry receive the adequate attention I would also I want to you give an example of the Disability Commission, which I see very clearly that um, the Chairman House of Representatives, he is seated here, the Refugee Commission, and several other commissions that are humanitarian in nature and would need to join this force to ensure that we get to the grassroots. Once again, we want to thank you for the opportunity. We've submitted the details to you in this document and we believe that you would go through it and support us to deliver the renewed hope agenda of President Bola Ahmed Tinibu to Nigerians. Nigerians are desperately waiting. Thank you, sir.